Hey, good morning, everybody. My name is Blake Wheeler. I am with Boulevard Home. I have been in the appliance industry for 29 years now repairing appliances. So in this video today, we're gonna to be covering a few different appliances, uh, actually all the different appliances to be exact. We'll be covering laundry, we'll be covering refrigerators, dishwashers, microwaves, and ranges. We'll talk about what's the best and what's not the best and what to look for and what not to look for in an appliance uh, and what would be best for your needs. So let's quickly talk about microwaves. Now with microwaves, honestly, I would look for a microwave that the features you like. With any microwave, they use a lot of the same components and parts. For example, in a Sharp, you may find an LG Magnetron in it. You might find a GE, you might find a Samsung Magnetron in it. The best for microwaves is to go find the look you like, the features you like on it, and that would probably be the best one uh, for you because they're all basically about the same. A very common question that we get on microwaves, you know, as far as failure rates, what fails, what doesn't fail. The biggest failure rate on the microwave is actually user-induced, if you, if you really think about that. We have high voltages going through the door switches on a microwave. The door switch is what determines what the microwave knows the door is closed and when it can properly apply power to the right things and to safely operate. We do have high voltages going through these switches, so a lot of times people make the mistake of grabbing the door and pulling it open because, oh, I've got five I'm gonna check it, they grab the door and they pull it open. What happens is the door switches in there, they spark when they open, just like you've seen a light switch and you flip it on or your drill, when you run your drill, you see this spark in there. Well, that's what happens to these door switches. They spark when they open. When that happens, it creates burn marks on these switches. They fail and they fail pretty quickly because you start getting carbon buildup and so they don't make contact like they should have. That's why whenever you wanna open the microwave door, if it's during the time that the microwave is counting down or being in process of using, what you always wanna do is you wanna press the pause button. If you actually look, it says start and it says pause on it. Just press that pause button, open the door, check your food, put it back in, press start button again. That way you're gonna save yourself a lot of hassle with having door switch issues or other issues strictly because you're impatient and wanna open it up. For all you people that like to sit and watch the microwave and wait for that one second left so you can open that door before it beeps at you because you don't wanna wake somebody up in the other room or you just wanna beat it, don't do it. Just press the pause button and like I said, you'll save yourself a lot of hassle with the microwave and possible failures with it. All right, so now let's talk about our, our friendly stoves that everybody has in their home. Now, a stove is a stove. I mean, there are different types of stove. You have induction stoves, you have radiant type stoves. That's your, where you see the glow from underneath. You have your gas ranges. They're your three most common ones. For the most part, they are very reliable. They work, they work well. When you start getting into the commercial stuff, Vikings, Wolves, Thermidors, that is where we seem to have more problems with the ranges, strictly because they are very large, complex. They work fantastic and they're great commercial ranges, but typically we have more problems with those than we do just a standard range. So with your standard range for what goes in most homes, I would just pick whatever you know features you like, look at how hot the burners get, and that's the stove that I'd be purchasing uh, that, that best fits your needs for your family. Certain things have to happen for a, say a gas burner for it to fail. Stuff like boil overs, where it gets into the burners and gets into the igniters and they don't want to ignite properly. Talk about pans, but the pans aren't flat sitting on a regular radiant type cooktop. Pick the appliance that you like the features. That is the most important as far as my opinion goes. And if you do want the big commercial ranges, which are fantastic, honestly expect more problems with it strictly because they have more components and it's much larger. So it does take a couple guys to come out there to actually slide it out to work on it. So, you know, usually there's a little bit more uh, repair costs involved if you ever run into problems with that down the road. Now we're gonna go to the category of dishwashers. Now, I'm gonna be honest with everybody. I am pretty biased when it comes to dishwashers. I've been doing this for a long time. I have seen lots of different manufacturers. I have worked on a lot of different manufacturers. They all work and they all clean. Where it comes to is how well they clean and how long they will last and how quiet they are. In my opinion, Bosch dishwashers are by far the best dishwasher on the market. The other ones are good, but the Bosch's have everybody beat. They work well, last a long time, quiet, and they do a fantastic job. Most of my problems that I have with Bosch dishwashers, if I have a problem with Bosch dishwashers, it's usually either a use and care issue or it's something outside the dishwasher causing the failure. Now, I'm not saying they're 100% foolproof because they're not, and I'm gonna tell you that straight up, but they are hands down the best dishwashers on the market. Now, to everybody, if you can't afford a Bosch, and the Bosch's are expensive, and I'm not gonna say that they're not, but they are worth the investment in your home. There's a lot of good other manufacturers out there. The Whirlpools are great units. Electrolux is a great unit. The GEs are great units. When you start getting into the contractor grade ones, then you're gonna get into, you know, we can start picking them apart and saying, well, this one's better than this one, or this one's better than this one. But, you know, most of them are just a good dishwasher and they will, 
you know, provide you good service. One thing I don't want to be amiss in saying with this, the BSH Corporation, there are three manufacturers, Bosch, Thermador, and Gaggenau. Now, now Thermador is the higher end of the Bosch line. Their dishwashers are exactly the same for the most part. They have a lot of the same working parts, but they, those have a lot more features, a lot more functions. So when I say Bosch is the best, Thermador is definitely in that category. There it is, even a little step above what a normal Bosch would be. All right, now the exciting category of refrigerators. Everybody loves their refrigerators, especially when they're not working. Actually, they really hate it when they're not working because they lose a lot of food. And if you've been to the supermarket recently, to have you lose that food in there, especially that pack of eggs you just bought of 12 eggs, you know, that's a lot of money really fast when they're not working. So we have a couple different types of refrigerators. We have, we have your basic top freezers, French door bottom freezers, and we have your side-by-sides. They're kind of all in a different category as far as which one's the best, which one's not the best in each category. When you break it down to nuts and bolts, the less features that's on the refrigerator, the less problems it's going to have because there are fewer working parts in it. The biggest issue that we have with anybody's refrigerator, and this is across the board, any category you want to talk to, side by side, bottom freezers, top freezers, the ice maker and the water and ice distribution system is the number one problem with anybody's refrigerator. Doesn't matter who it is, that is just the facts. Now, if you look on Consumer Reports, they will list every year from manufacturers when they're talking about the problems that they have. So for the dishwasher, they have washability issues, not draining, you know, so on and so forth, and they list each one of them. Across the categories, until you get refrigerators, the complaints generally run anywhere between nine to 11% across the board as far as problems. Now, when you jump into refrigerators, you're in that category until you jump into ice maker, not making ice, or dispensers not working and then your problems jump into the 25 to 30 percent and this is what i tell all my guests i've been telling them for years and i've been asking looking for an answer and if somebody can answer this you know for me it'd be great put it in the comment section we'll look at it there's nothing else in the home that i have found that i can think of in an appliance that runs 24 hours a day working in a sub-zero climate dealing with water electronics and electricity. We have all these factors working against this ice maker. So of course you're gonna have more failures with it because you're putting it in a harsh environment, expecting it to make ice. Yeah, it's great, you know, but the alternative is what? Filling up ice cube trays and sticking in your freezer. Well, so with ice makers, yeah, you're gonna have more problems. Is it more convenient for you to have that ice in there and risk a higher repair cost or repair rate because of that? To most people, the answer is yes. They love that ice and they want that ice. Not having an ice maker, is it gonna be less expense for repair or repair over the life of the product? Absolutely. Is it gonna make the refrigerator quit because your ice maker's not working? No, all that's gonna happen is you're not gonna have ice. You know, some people are lucky and they never have ice maker problems and some people are unlucky and they have them all the time. With that all being said, let's talk about the best refrigerators out there. In my personal opinion, when it comes to a side-by-side, -side, honestly, they are all decent. I have some reservations with the LGs. We've had some problems with the LGs over the years with their compressors and a few other things. You know, they've changed to a new refrigerant, which is R600. The jury's still out because with the last batch of failures we had with a bunch of compressors failing, they were the older compressors and they were, you know, years back and it took years to show up. So I can't say 100% for sure that it's gonna be better or worse, but I know they've changed them and it's a different refrigerant. So that's one I would be definitely be leery of. Samsungs are very technologically advanced. They try to do a lot of cutting edge things with their appliances. So in doing that, those have a little bit of problems with everybody else. Honestly, I'd go back to what you like as far as it does have the features that I like, the ice makers that I like, the shelving set up the way I like. That's what I would look at mostly in the side-by-side. -side. Frigidaires are great, the GEs are great. The only ones that I would probably be a little bit hesitant are, like I said, are LG and Samsung. Now, bottom freezers. Again, I'm gonna put my bias hat on again. Now, when I refer to as a bottom freezer, now the, the new terminology for a bottom freezer is a French door bottom freezer. We have two doors. Frigidaires are my favorite bottom freezers by far. They are my favorites. They work, they work well, and they work well for a long time. But that is what I would recommend to everybody. And that's what I recommend to all my guests if they ask what to buy currently. Now things can change, but right now they have been very solid for a very long time. So again, ice maker issues, yes, everybody does. But functionality of it, it's fantastic. It, it just runs and runs and runs. And I have very few problems with, with stuff not working or not cooling on it. So that is a very good brand. Another good refrigerator is the GE bottom freezers are actually a very good bottom freezer. Also, uh, very few problems with them. Probably a Whirlpool unit probably after that. Everything else at the bottom part of my category. LG and Samsung, same story as the side-by-sides. They're having some issues. We don't know if they're fixed or not. We're gonna hope they are. But again, that's something you need to know upfront and ask yourself, do you wanna take this risk? Because I don't know. 
and I'm not gonna say they're gonna be fantastic when they're not because they may have issues. So let's talk about washing machines. There are two categories of washing machines. We have top loads and we have front loads. Everybody has their personal preferences on what they like as far as a top load or a front load. They do both do a fantastic job. They do it differently. Top load machines are a little more aggressive on your clothes. They run a shorter wash period. Front load machines are actually gentler on your clothes because they use more of a tumbling action. Let's talk about top loads as far as the best on top load. Now the very best on top load, in my opinion, is the Speed Queen top load sets. Speed Queen has been around forever. They have two different versions. They have the newer version and they have what's called the classic version. The newer version is a little bit more gentle on your clothes and you have the classic version that's a lot more aggressive on your clothes. They are the best, they've been around forever. They have fantastic warranties. Again, with those, we don't have a lot of problems with them. Most people have them, they just run forever. I've been working on these machines literally the whole time, almost the whole time I've been doing appliance repair, they've been around. So. They are fantastic top load machines. After that, we step into other manufacturers. Now, surprising enough is where I dislike LG on refrigerator category. Their wash machines, top loads are fantastic washing machines. I would not have a minute's hesitation buying one for my home. The GEs are right on par with them. I think they're a fantastic top load machine too. After that, you know, Whirlpool's a, a good manufacturer. Frigidaire's, their top load machines are not my favorite. On all the new wash machines, and I know when I'm saying this, I'm throwing this in the top load category, but the normal cycle is the eco cycle on every one of these washing machines now. So if you use the normal cycle, it's going to use the least amount of water it possibly can use, and it's gonna use the coolest water it can possibly use no matter what you select, because it is the eco cycle. If you want them to fill with more water and use the deep fill options, or you want it to actually give you the temperature of water you want, you'd want to select something other than the normal cycle because that is the eco cycle for most of the new washing machines. So now let's talk about front load washers. I like front load washers. A lot of people don't like front load washers because they smell and they're stinky and they're hard to clean out, they have to do maintenance on them, they have to run wash machine cleaners and they don't want to have to bother themselves with these these trivial things about taking care of their stuff, just like when you don't take care of your car and then it falls apart. Well, same thing with the washing machine. But with front load washing machines, you do have to make sure that the door is opened after, unless you have one that vents out like the GEs do, make sure that you run a cleaning cycle with a cleaner or bleach or whatever the manufacturer recommends about every 50 wash cycles to help it clean out to get rid of that smells and stuff. The smells are basically from the concentration of dirt and everything that's actually in between the drums that basically is not getting cleaned out because it's just sitting down there because there's not much water in them. So what's the best? Well, my opinion, the best front load machine on the market is the Electrolux front load washers. They are fantastic. They just work. I have so few problems with them. Do they break? Yes. Again, I'm not gonna lie to you, but the failure rate is very low on these. So don't let that scare you when I say yes, they're gonna break because yours may never break. Those people, well, it broke once, it's a terrible machine. Well, that's like saying your car broke once and it's a terrible car or I broke my finger, so I'm a terrible person. I mean, sometimes I, I hear this stuff and I just scratch my head and I'm thinking, well, you've had one problem with it. And I understand it's not the end of the world. The machine works still, it's taken care of, it's fixed. You're not, you know, this was a fluke type thing. So don't fall into that trap because if you have one and it breaks, that it's a terrible machine, it's really not. It's a fantastic machine, it works great. Number two choice, again, LG, surprise, surprise. They're a fantastic washer. I don't know how they can get the washers, you know, so right and their refrigerator so wrong. Uh, it still baffles me. My number three choice would be the, the GEs. After that, I would probably go the Whirlpool units and everything else after that, in my opinion. But those are the products that I would definitely be looking for if I'm purchasing a washer today. My first choice would be an Electrolux. Wouldn't even be a second thought in my brain, that's what I wouldn't buy. So for dryers, this is my recommendation for you, okay? My recommendation is whatever washer you buy, buy the matching dryer to make your wife happy. Because if you have a mismatched washer and dryer, man, you're in for a lot of trouble because you're gonna hear about it until you buy your wife or your spouse the matching set to it. So just buy the matching dryer to the washer you pick everything will be good. Well, thank you for watching this video. I hope this video has been informative. I hope it's been helpful in making some of your decisions on what to buy as far as what you're looking for in a category. There are some great units out there. Uh, what I recommend is strictly my personal recommendation, and this comes from my experience repairing these. Uh, it has nothing to do with repair rates with this person on this YouTube page said this, and this person on this YouTube page said that. I understand that, but I'm basing this strictly on my experience and I want you to be happy with your purchase and I want you to make the best decision. So I'm trying to get, arm you with the best information you can have to make the purchase that you're going to be happy with because 
If it breaks, you have to come see me. And if you buy the wrong thing and I say buy this and I have to come see you, you're not gonna be happy with me. So I want you to get something that's gonna last and it's gonna work. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. If you have any questions, please put in the comments below.